अपना टाइम आएगा तू नंगा ही तो आया है क्या घंटा लेकर जाएगा Zoya, thank you so much for talking to me. So you're writer, director, extraordinaire. Uh, you are mm -hmm. absolutely, and you've been at it for the last decade in particular. It's like you're in some sort of relentless pursuit of telling good stories. Definitely, I want to have a body of work. I think I've done in the last ten years uh, four features, one web series, and two shorts, and I feel I could have done one more feature. You know. But uh, but now, I mean, I, I have time and I just want to put out a body of work, that's it. So there's an element of hypocrisy, of class, of poetry uh, running through all your films. Does that have to do with your upbringing, the dinner table conversations? Yeah, I think uh, like stories throw up things thematically. I like poetry, I mean my dad's a poet, there are many other poets in my family. I. Uh, uh, write myself, but uh, I mean it's amateur and English and personal. But uh, I think they, it's used in two films. I like it as um, I like. I mean, with Gully Boy, it's about a poet, so it had to be there. Uh, in uh, Zindagi, that's the first time I used it. I made him a poet because I yeah. needed something that could uh, put an internal thought out uh, without people saying it because it was about boys and they're quite internalized and they don't really express with each other. Yeah. So poetry was a nice, interesting medium to use. And, uh, I think it works beautifully and we have such a culture of songs in our film and poetry is just part of that. It's just half of that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I tend to use it because I think it works for the audience as well. And the whole class thing and the, you know, hypocrisy of society. Yeah. But it's just all around and it's, yeah. uh, I don't know, you observe it and you see it and then sometimes it's nice to call it out. You're very mm. real, but at the same time you're unbelievably commercial. I mean it's relative, there are a lot of commercial filmmakers that don't think I'm commercial enough. Yeah. There are a lot of filmmakers that I think I'm commercial. The thing is, you want to tell the story you want to tell and you want to do it in a way that can reach the maximum people. And also don't want to dilute a vision, dilute, break a style. Uh, basically bastardize yeah. the idea to the point where it doesn't, it, it's not that, it's not pure at all, you know. So that balance is tough and it's got its own audience. Yeah. It doesn't have a pan-India audience yet, you know, it's not completely there. So, you know, you have, there's a lot of substance and depth to your characters. Even when it's a glossy character, like those characters in Dil Dharak Nido. I mean, see, gloss is a treatment. Gloss yeah. is not the idea. So yeah. gloss is a treatment of how you want to put it out. So that is something that comes later. And when you're at the writing stage and you're writing people, you know, writing characters, they have to have heft. Otherwise, they're not going to resonate with anybody. So it is a, it's an amalgamation, firstly, working with my co-writer, Reema Karthi. And it's an amalgamation of people you see in real life, uh, observation. Both of us are literature students. Uh, so, you know, uh, references from things we've read and, uh, and fiction, yeah. you know, and things you make up. Yeah, so you're basically observing wherever you go. So, yeah. yeah. So, for Gully Boy, you've had over 50 collaborators for music. It was all about music, it was about Dharavi. You said it was one of your best shooting experiences because they're so used to you shooting. Yeah. Uh, they give you a privacy, they let you shoot. But on a personal level, um, how did you feel when you were there? It's extremely functional mm. and yeah. uh, clean and sorted and they have systems that completely work but and they have a great spirit you know everyone's surviving but what you you don't think about the people you think about the system and you think the system has failed them you know they're yeah. doing the best they can in a shitty situation for gully boy suppose ranveer did not exist in this industry who would be the person i don't know maybe someone new so uh, for apna time aayega was it uh, Sabka Time Aiga? Did your father change this? It was Did Sabka he... Time Aiga. It was written by Divine and uh, my dad heard it and he didn't hear the music. He just heard the thing and he was like, Sabka Time Aiga is too generic. You should make it up now because that will be owned. That will yeah. make it more personal. People will own that. That's more anthemic. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we did. So from finding it difficult to cast for luck by chance, mm -hmm. uh, now you must have people just lining up. Uh, 
asking to do films with you. That must feel good. I mean, you feel uh, slightly relaxed, but it's not so simple. Yeah. You know, yeah, people want to work with you, but they want to work with you in a film or in a role that suits them. Of you course. know, uh, nobody's working with you blindly and that's fine. Yeah. There are a lot of actors I want to work with, but if they told me, listen, can you make this film with me in it? I won't just do it unless it works for me. There are yeah. no complaints. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm in a position to approach whoever I want to approach. Yeah. But that doesn't mean everyone's going to jump and do anything you offer them. Of course. Also. So Made in Heaven, mm -hmm. uh, your big digital splash, it was fantastic. Thank it you. It really was. Thank and you. Um, in a country like India, to emphasize um, on LGBTQ mm -hmm. in such a strong way. It was a bit of a risk. I mean, we didn't think of it as a risk at all, actually, uh, when we wrote it. Rimani created it, Alankrita came and wrote it with us. And I think all three of us have the same kind of uh, values, the yeah. same politics, the same uh, sense of, you know, the, the, the need for human rights. The, I mean, because that's what it is. It's a basic human right and uh, it's absolutely ridiculous uh, it that is. it was illegal. I mean, yep. it's completely ridiculous. And when we started the show, it was still illegal. And I think it was like a cry to the universe, you know, and, and it, before the show came out, uh, the law was repeal law, you know, and yep. so that was just, we were so happy. But um, it, you have to put it out there. You have to put it out there. That's yes. a sizable section of people that are in living in denial of their basic human rights. But what we've seen in the last uh, couple of years is that the story is everything. The dialogues are everything. That's what's working. You've seen small, smaller films with yeah. small actors do incredibly well. Uh, you've seen stars failing in certain films because the film is bad. Right. So, it's a great position for you to be in and for all writers and directors. Is there a lot more respect for that community now? Uh, I is there more so. clout? That, uh, I you think know? so. I, I, um, it's the first, it's a very, very interesting time because it's the first time that money is chasing creative. Yeah. It was always creative that had to write a script and go and hunt for funding and look for funding, but that's not the case now. People are just giving you money, you know, and yeah. that's the first time that's happening. And it's a great, it's a very exciting time uh, because you have short formats that are working, you have long formats that are working, you have features. So there's various platforms to actually delve in and to make a film. And uh, there are different stories to tell. You know, everyone's sort of now donning that producer's hat also. Everyone's, everyone wants a bigger piece of the pie. Everyone wants to take on stories that they yeah. want to tell. How is that changing the dynamic in the industry? I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but yeah. I feel like as a creator, as a writer or director, at some point you want to own your content because yeah. that's your security yeah. for later. You know, your IP, your intellectual property, yeah. that's all you have. So the only way to do that is to produce. So yes, you want to own your work, you want a bigger piece of the pie because you are established, you're getting out there, and it makes it, it's just a natural progression and it makes sense. That's one thing. The second thing is that when you are in control, you can offer a platform to like-minded artists. You can enable like-minded artists to make their films. And I think that's where it comes from. It comes from eventually securing yourself and making sure that you know you grow commercially. And the second thing is to be able to put out the work you want, to put your, you know, put the money where your mouth is. Yeah. And also to be enabled to grow the kind of content you want to see out there. Do you sort of parallelly now look at the digital space also when you're planning now the next year or two Absolutely. years or three years? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're doing Made in Heaven season yes. two. We're yeah. doing another show. We're, it's not. It's untitled yet for um, Amazon. I'm doing. Uh, I'm part of an anthology, the, yeah. the Lust Stories. Yeah. Absolutely. We're doing the next one, which is Ghost Stories. So that's yeah. for Netflix. So yeah, I mean that has to be factored in, yeah. and rightfully so. They're great platforms to work with. When you're writing or co-writing. Do you sort of lock yourselves away or, no, you know, we, how do you, how do you do it? We're disciplined. We're disciplined. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to lock away. I don't need to leave town. I mean, I can write in my bathroom. I can write anywhere. I don't yeah. have those issues. Uh, but I, we need discipline. What I need is structure. So I need to know that I'm sitting at 8 in the morning to 10 on this event, on this script. Or I'm sitting from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock on that. And then that's what you do. So yeah. I need that structure. When I'm doing a film, uh, Rima and me usually work from like 10 in the morning to 4, 5. We take a break in the middle, yeah. but we're there. We're there every day, whether 
we are inspired to write, whether we don't write. Sometimes there are days we just talk, sometimes there are days we watch things for reference, sometimes there are days we just research and sometimes there are days nobody speaks, we're just writing. Yeah. But the point is to sit there and do it because there's no muse that comes and hits you. You just have to be there and you just have to work. There's no and what's way. amazing is I think you've had the foresight to understand very early on that collaboration leads to such incredible work. Of course, because you filmmaking know, is own, it's a collaborative art. The numbers today have become so big compared to even when you first started working. Right. So, you know... You mean the kind of money the box office actor, makes? The box or, office makes, what the actors are getting paid, right. the kind of budgets. Right. Um, you know, all of that has now just become so big. Right. That's uh, good, but the industry is growing. Yeah. So yeah. how... You know, you have to navigate through this very professionally to yeah. save time, to yeah, sort yeah, of, yeah, of be course. on schedule. Of course. Do you feel like people are now working like that in the industry? Yes, of course. Everybody, I mean, most people are working like that and as they should. Yeah. Because you, it is a very expensive medium. It's an expensive, uh, you know, art form. I mean, it's, it's as commercial as it is yeah. um, artistic. So, I mean, and the thing is today, you can make a film in that tiny a budget because you have the platforms to put it out. Yeah. And you can make a film that's like huge, you know. So you have to know who you're talking to, what your audience is, and then be responsible for that. There's an obsession with Bollywood. Do you think it's almost on the verge of sort of being unhealthy? You know, uh, yeah, I, I understand that. Which just, means that, you know, the actors, I sometimes I feel like they're just in a little bubble. Yeah. Because they're almost worshipped in this country. Yeah, but they don't have the... You have to understand there's not freedom for them to really be out and have those experiences. They're not allowed to. Yeah. People don't leave them alone, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's, they, ha they, they end up being in a bubble because frankly there's no choice. Yeah. You know, uh, you can't really have experiences uh, that are regular, you know. Uh, yeah. You're not allowed that freedom when you're a star. So that does curtail their life uh, on one level. But being in the business, you know that that's what makes the business grow, is the obsession with it. And at the same time, yes, it's unhealthy because it's the only form of popular culture. Yeah. That's why it's unhealthy. You know, we need a we need a throbbing music business. We need we need other stars. You want other scenes to thrive. You want art to, like art to thrive, and it does. But it's a subculture. Yeah. You need that to get more traction. You know, like fashion shows, constant using actors. Why? Yeah. You know, like people are there for something else. Yeah. Also. I, I think it's great that film holds the place it does, but I wish it wouldn't permeate into everything. Yeah. You know, we need we need other pop culture. Okay, so what is the next sort of one year looking like for you? You know, I think growing Tiger Baby. I think that's yeah. my foremost concern. Why did you start your own production? Why didn't you just join your brother? Because he has his own company. I can't take it over. No, sort that's, of join him, join ranks. Uh, no, it, it, it's it's Ritesh and his baby, and they've really cultivated it and grown it and nurtured it and uh, launched filmmakers like me in it, uh, and that's theirs. And you want your own space at some point, and I work in conjunction with them. So the features that we are going to be developing, they will be uh, producing, co-producing it with us, and it's it, it works perfectly. But uh, you need to have your own space at some point because you need to have your own brand. You need to say your own things and. I think have your own ethos, you know, yeah. uh, put out the stories that resonate with you personally. So, yeah. So what is the next year looking like for Tiger Baby, for you as a director? Uh, well, we're doing, like I said, Made yeah. in Heaven. We're doing another show with Amazon. I personally am going to be doing a short film. Uh, I'm, we're, I'm, we're writing a script for Rima. I'm working on another, I'm writing another script, which will be uh, done by my ex-assistant. Uh, I am um, figuring out my next idea for a feature and uh, we are working with two other directors on their films that we want to just produce. Wow. Yeah, so there's, it, it's, it's manic. Also, we are, we are working on three documentaries, sorry. You're working on three documentaries yeah. also? Yeah, which we are producing. What and kind of documentaries? Uh, I don't want, we can't talk about it yet, <laughs> but three docus, yeah. What's something that your parents may have told you or a director you've worked with that has sort of stayed with you? My parents have told me many things that have stayed with me. I mean, it's like As we no, all have yeah, been no told by parents. Thing. But sort of for work, for um, believing in yourself or about creating good content. You know, I think the way we were brought up, yeah. we were brought up in a way 
where they didn't need to ever tell us believe in yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we were just brought up with that. We were brought up with a sense of you could have an opinion. You could agree to disagree with your parent. We yeah. were brought up to be expressive in that way yeah. and to analyze and to think and to decide for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, in that sense, of course, we were there was guidance. Like my dad was very particular about our education and things like that. So there was no dignity there. Yeah. But besides that, um, and we weren't really given money. I started working while I was still studying. Yeah. Uh, so I was doing literature and sociology, and I had a job. Yeah. Because I had very little pocket money and if I wanted more, they were like, you're free to earn it. You know, so those things I think were really important. And because, instilled early on. Yeah, so we, we we worked for ourselves and like, you know, we were, it was normal. So I don't think they went out of their way. They just allowed us a lot of freedom and let us be. And I think that, I think that's our real, that's our real privilege. Who's an actor you'd love to explore with next? You know, there are just so many. Yeah. There are just so many that, you know, uh, like I I want to do one for Musharuk. Of course. Yeah. You need to bring him back to glory. Like, I, I can't do that. He'll uh, add to my glory. <laughs> yeah. No, we'd all love to see him do a hit film. Yeah. I mean, we're all rooting for him to do a hit film. He's unbelievable. So mm -hmm. I really hope that you do that. Mm -hmm. And I hope you work together to find a beautiful movie I together. I hope so. And Zoya, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.